dear students, I am Virajin Samantaray from Aryabhata Career Academy. Today I have taken my literature topic and that is one poem that is called as Dakhodes, written by William Wordsworth. A British, a British uh, romantic poet. Now we will go through that the introductory chapter of William Wordsworth. He was one famous and started the period of romanticism in the end of the 18th century in England. So let us see what was the basic point of him. How did he reach at that apex? He was taken back in 1770 and died in 1850. So, his father's name was John Warsworth and his mother's name was Anne Cookson. And when he was nine years old, his mother was passed away. And when he was 13 years old, his father was expired. So he was the second child of his parents among the five children. So he had gone in 1790, William Warsworth had gone hands. Before that, he had studied in Oxford University and Cambridge University in United Kingdom. In 1790, he had gone to France. And he thought he would do something. He would do something. But it was his bad luck. In 19, 1793, He returned from France because at that time the greatest French Revolution, the great French Revolution was broken, broken out and he had to return from France and it was a very precarious moment of him. He was penniless, he had no job. His love was changed. In 1795, 1795, he got inheritance to live with his sister, beloved sister, Dorothy Warsaw. He was a jobless, he was penniless. But one thing was very, very good for him. He came across, he came across one person and that was called as William Baldwin. William This William Baldwin inspired him in such a way he had to move forward. Then he came across one Balladian. Samuel Taylor Coleridge. This Samuel Taylor 
Helen Paul Ritz. At that time, was was the best ballad writers. He was the best uh, ballads writer in the age of uh, romanticism. So, Samuel Taylor and William Godwin inspired William Wordsworth and by the help of Samuel Taylor Coleridge, he had led to the life of a poet. Life of a poet. Both of them, Samuel Taylor and William Wordsworth, made the age of a romanticism. Made the age of a romanticism. Romanticism. Johnny from poet of romanticism to poet of nature. Poet of nature. Yeah. He had told William Wordsworth told. Poem is the spontaneous overflow of your own emotions. So, if any person is called as a poet, the poems, the verse, the lyrics will come spontaneously from their heart in the sequence. 
constituency of your emotion. So, when he began his life with a point of romanticism, he became the pioneer of uh, the point of uh, nature. He mingled the nature, God and a human being. Nature, the nature, God and human being. Wordsworth and giving the main character 
has the title the prudence. So these are the introduction part of uh, my poem, the diapodils. So let us see what is the meaning of a diapodils. A bear set, bear set, yellow colored, what is the meaning of a Lonely as a 
cloud that floats on high over our bells and hills. When all at once I saw a crowd, a host, a host of golden daffodils, beside the lake beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way, they stretched in a never-ending line along the margin of a bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance, tossing their heads in a sprightly dance. The poets beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in a green. A queen could not work but be gay. I in such a jocund company, I gazed and gazed, but a little thought. What wealth, what wealth the so to me had a brought. For often, for often, when on my coach, I laughed. In heaven and in pensive mood, the pass upon the inward eye, which is the bliss of a sol solitude, which is the bliss of a solitude, and then my heart with pleasure feels and dances with the daffodils. What a pleasant, what a mind blowing. Lyrics it is. It was, it is, and it will be forever. Everlasting lyrics of a William Watson. Let us see. Here, in a past and a past sentence, what is the title of uh, the original lyric and a poem of William Watson? I wander lonely as a cloud. This is called as a simir. Simai. What is the meaning of a simai? Joining with the word as or like. So I wonder. So William, our poet, William Wordsworth, 
wondered lonely as a cloud. Actually, he was not lonely. He was alone with his sister, Dorothy Wordsworth. But his mind was so lonely. So there was in a he had written this poem. In some critics are telling in a different manner. It was written in 1802. Some telling this poem. I wonder only as a cloud was written in 1802. Some writers, some critics, they are telling. And some, the original writing, original title of this poem, I wonder only as a cloud, it was written. In 1802, and some other uh, criti critics tell that it was 1804, whatever uh, it might be. In 1802, two, there were two events, there were two important events happened in the life of uh, William Wordsworth. First important event was he got married in 1802 and second important event was he had lost his uh, one of his uh, brothers. So in the within the background of this poem when William Wordsworth and his sister, both of them were wandering at the left side of left district, the left district of uh, UK. All of a sudden, they came across a host of daffodils. That was within the margin, border of the lake. So, here I wondered, lonely, actually it was, he was not lonely, he was with his sister Dorothy Wordsworth. His mind was lonely, like lonely as a cloud. That means a lonely cloud is endless. That means William Wordsworth, along with his sister Dorothy, was moving on the left side cloud. Here, he compared himself with the word cloud. He compared himself with the cloud. This is called as a smile. Means joining with as and a like with the comparison of our two words. That was a human being, William Wordsworth, was a lonely as cloud. So it is called as a simile. So that floats on high over and hills and hills. He was wondering as endlessly along with Dorothy Wordsworth. on the left side and he compared himself with the lonely cloud lonely cloud as floats over high bells bells means valleys valleys and hills how on a lonely cloud 
works over valleys and hills. His mind, William Wordsworth's mind, floats like lonely, aimless cloud. Lonely and a aimless cloud. So when all at once I saw a crowd, all at once means all of a sudden.
they are dancing like human beings fluttering like birds and their butterflies and they dancing it is imagined by uh, it is imagined by our poet so continuous second stanza continuous as this stars it is continuous as this stars it is also what the simile compare he compares with a distress he compares daffodils with his stars with stars he compares daffodils with a stars continuous as the stars that a sign and a twinkle on the milky way how that means uncountable numberless stars they are sparkling they are shining in the milky way in the galaxy a band of our stars to green within the galaxy they stretch the the margin of a bay that means here william watsworth william watsworth compares a large number of daffodils on the uh, bay of on the margin of the bay with the numberless uncountable stars in a milky way or a galaxy what is called as the semal and to increase on the milky way to increase to increase meaning is appearing shining appearing disappearing just like the daffodils flowers as moving to and fro away in the slow breeze it is these are appeared the views of uh, twinkling stars in the mind of uh, in the glass of our poet william wordsworth they stretched in a never ending line the daffodils the flowers of a daffodil we are stretched in a never ending process means up to the end of the glance of our point reaches heart point it was a stress these flowers were uh, nodding flowers were uh, twinkling up to that point that's why it is called as never ending procedure they stretch in never ending line the daffodils are lively shining are situated on the margin of the bay what was never ending procedure without any end along with the margin of the bay margin is a border border of the lake 10000 saw i at a glance at the streets at a glance means at a streets at a time she was coming across a large number of daffodils that's why he just imaginary word he produced it here 10000 some critics telling it was the exaggeration of william wordsworth but in my language in my voice it was not exaggeration 
all of a sudden even our brains has taken a line of non ending procedure of anything any object <coughs> we may call it as any number numberless so if william wasworth had taken 10000 there is no objection at all so
in such a jokant company. Jokant means merry. Happiness. So he wanted to be one boy as he was with such a <clears throat> joyful event of daffodils, fluttering daffodils, and uh, that is the Jokand Company, happiness company of him. I guessed and guessed what a little thought. He guessed, he looked, guessed means looked. He looked and he looked with a little thought. At that time, he was purely thoughtless. Little look means thoughtless. was purely thoughtless. So, in fourth standard, what went they show, what went they show to me had brought first offer when on my coach I arrived. After returning from the lake and the side of the police, when he was in his coach, in his rest bed, he was wondering which type of wealth the view of a document had given him in vacant or in pension board. When he was when he was in a thoughtful or thoughtless mood. Finish, eh? So he was wondering how much wealth the views of uh, daffodils gave him when he was in his coach, in his bed of rest. And either he was in a pensive mood or thoughtful mood or so thoughtless mood. They pass upon that in your voice. Inside of the eyes, inner eyes, mind eyes, meaning is mind side. So, the fluttering daffodils, leave the fluttering daffodils, flash in his mind side. They flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of a solitude. Bliss meaning is Happiness, solitude means loneliness. So, when he was in loneliness, these are uh, uh, reminding the dancing of Padapodils, reminding his in his inward voice. And then my heart was a pleasure feels. At the time his heart fills with a, a large pleasure and it dances with the daffodils. His heart was filled with a, too much peace, too much happiness, and his heart also dances with the daffodils. So, my dear students, it's the end of my poem show. Till next video, goodbye. Jai.